committee is to create an atmosphere of inclusion, equality, and accessibility through education and outreach to recognize the value of a diverse community. I believe what you sent out the minutes last week. If everybody's had a chance to review them, I'd accept a motion to approve or any changes that we would like to see made. I would make it a motion to approve. Okay. We have a motion from Darcy. Do we have a second? I will second. Okay, we have a second from Shay. All in favor, uh, say aye or raise your hand if you're on the, the computer and able to. Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, okay, we'll move on to public comment. Is there anybody, I know we don't have very many cameras on, but is there anybody on the call that's here to make public comment today? Hearing none, we'll move on to the annual report. Uh, this is something that Sister Hannah has helped us with in the past few years. Um, and I don't know if, if, Sister Hannah, if you were planning on getting this here. Um, so why don't, Whitney, where are we at on that? Has there, is that something that's they've been working on for the last several months or are we looking to assign somebody to do that? Please remind me. Um, Sister Hannah has the report for this year. She said there's not a lot of stuff on it, but um, I think she'll do the report in January before her term is up. And then um, we'll be needing somebody to for her to pass the torch on to. OK, so it sounds like we have two things to go through first. Sister Hannah, do you want to give us an update on the reports and um, maybe we can talk about what days would be best for you to present that to the commission. Um, yeah, actually, I haven't really done anything on it, um, but I have, you know, I have the outline from last time. I can fill in stuff, but yeah, it's going to be pretty sparse, obviously. Um, I'll have to look. Did we do what did we did we do anything in January? I don't believe so. Not that I can recall. I think our spring uh -oh. our spring event had to be um, postponed and then we ended up canceling it. And of course, we didn't do anything this fall. We did do the library event, right? This year? OK. Um, yes, yeah, it's going to be a different report, but I can put it together. Yes. I certainly think you should highlight the video that you and Manisha worked on. Um, in this report, I think that was right. a, well, that was a new that's initiative. That's all we have, so well, <laughs> sure. Lots of pictures, yep. take lots of screenshots. Um, yeah, so you're, you're yeah, comfortable, I do. You're comfortable presenting that on the at the January Commission meeting, Sister Hannah? Yeah, and that would be when do they meet again? The second and fourth Tuesdays. Yes. Okay. Are you thinking the fourth or the second? Um, that can be up to you, actually. Okay. Um, maybe the fourth one. Okay. If that works for the, I think we got bumped or something last time, but January twenty sixth. <laughs> and they've been meeting. Um, are they letting the public in, or how does that work, or just present? If you are comfortable attending the commission meeting in in person, you certainly can. Uh, mm -hmm. The only request is that anybody in the Tom Baker room needs to be wearing a mask until you get to the podium. And when you're at the podium, then you can take off your mask to address the commissioners. Um, or if you would prefer, you can absolutely um, give your presentation via Zoom. So you just need to let us know, Hannah, what whatever is more comfortable for you and we'll help from there. OK, yeah, I would do it in person probably. OK. OK. And we would put that very close to the top of the agenda so you're not sitting and waiting for an hour or so for everything else to go first. We would we would uh, give you the first spot on the regular agenda side of things. So you should be in and out within a half an hour or so. Sounds good. 
And if any other committee members are interested in attending to show Hannah support, um, that's always encouraged. I know due to COVID-19, um, some of us or many of us might not be comfortable attending a commission meeting. Um, so if you if you aren't able, I'd encourage you to attend virtually. Uh, and Jason or Whitney, if you can provide us with the instructions on how to do that, that would be great. Sure. All right, so then next, um, in regards to the annual report, as Sister Hannah, unfortunately, will be leaving us uh, at the end of her term and um, we will still have an annual report to work on for next year. I would be looking for volunteers on who would be interested in taking that project. And Krista, I'm showing a few people with their hands up. I'm not sure if it was from the first motion or if they actually have comments. Looks like it's Shay and Annette. So um, Shay and Annette, if you have your hand up just by accident, if it's just lingering, if you could take it down. And if you have a, a question, go ahead and chime on in. Okay, there we go. So I was hoping they were volunteering. <laughs> um, so is anybody interested in taking on that annual report? Um, I guess for those who haven't uh, seen it before, maybe Hanny, you could give them an overview of what the process looks like and how much time you spend on it. Um, yeah, sure. The process is pretty easy. I can certainly send the, the, um, sort of skeleton to whoever's doing it because I have the first pages. You just kind of fill in, change the members' names. Um, you know, the mission statement, the new ones on there and all of that stuff, the logos are all good. So you would just have to fill in the inside, um, little description of each event that we did with some pictures. So it's, it's not heavy duty information. It's just something for the commissioners to look through or whoever and see what we've see what we've done in the past year basically so sort kind of like tuning your own horn to make sure that people know we're doing things and are um, making a contribution to the community I, guess. I suspect that I suspect the easiest way to to put that information together is if you start at the beginning of the year um, so that you're not rushing to do it at the end. Maybe each time an event is held, asking people for pictures, or if you're in attendance, taking pictures of your of it yourself. Definitely. Yeah. So I think that's why we'd be looking for somebody to um, step into that role now, rather than when the report is due, just so it's not such a heavy lift. Any questions on the annual report or is there anybody interested in taking that on? Could we have a little time to like maybe think on it and look at the schedule ahead because it's something, this is Brandy, by the way, I would consider, but it kind of depends on how the next couple weeks in, in the first month of 2021 kind of plays off with some of the other work that I'm involved in right now. So I want to make sure before I, I would like actually commit to that, that I'm not over committing myself and then I'm not holding up or being able to carry through the responsibilities of it. Nobody's interested in taking this on right now. We can table it for the next um, meeting and, and we can try to assign somebody that role uh, in January. I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, Jason, do we need a motion to table that or can we just move on to the agenda? I think just we can add it to the next agenda. That's <clears throat> that's fine. Okay. Um, so next on the list would be the cultural cultural awareness and sensitivity training and this is something brandy that um 
is a kind of a, a mission of yours. It was something you brought forth to the committee. So I'll probably just toss it over to you if that's OK and you can give us an update. I believe you were going to propose a few dates to us where we could um, schedule a time outside of our regular meeting to attend some cultural awareness training. Yeah, so I have spoken with um, Angel and Leah, the other two individuals who would be assisting me in this training, and we were looking towards the end of February. And so they both suggested that really the dates are kind of open. So I wanted to bring it back to the committee and see if there was a preference on the day of the week. And I know that we wanted it out. Well, last time I thought there was a toss of like, it could be one of our meeting times or it could be outside of it. And so with it being like that, we're looking to February, is there any um, conflict with that first and foremost to make sure it's not crossing over or overlapping any other events that usually go at the end of February, mid end of February. Um, and then are there preferred days of the week? Because like I said, the last, it would be either the week of the 15th or the week of the 22nd that we're looking to host this. And so with those being pretty open, I just wanted to be able to bring it to the committee and then bring back some of the discussion to Angel and Leah, and then we would um, solidify a date then. Um, one thing to be, uh, just pay attention to on those weekends that the 15th would normally be our regularly scheduled meeting. But since that's President's yeah. Day, I suspect we're going to meet on the 22nd. So we're looking to schedule it for a Monday evening. It probably wouldn't work. I do believe that at our last meeting, I'd have to go back to the minutes, but I believe that the committee agreed to do it outside of the regular meeting yeah. time because we... Yeah. We want to get through the agenda so um i don't know if it's easier for the committee to meet on a monday evening if we'd want to look at an alternate week or into other dates and times yeah and that's what i was kind of wondering because i know that there's you know like a lot of I, everyone's busy so i want to make sure that with a date that's being selected that the majority or all of the committee members are able to be present for it. And so that's why I wanted to be able to bring it up that we've, we're just looking at the last two weeks as the options to um, choose a date. And I'm assuming, you know, like a Friday evening, most people probably wouldn't necessarily attend, but um, so Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be the most open in the evenings. And I just wanted to toss those out there for, again, the, I, and I understand the week of the 15th, but those are the, the final two weeks in February are what we're looking at. And if you would prefer, if it's okay to send out then like a survey monkey or, or doodle poll with like spe then specific dates that if no one's, if we can't come up with a few of them here, then I'm fine with that. But that's kind of what the other individuals told me is that they have that flexibility and at the end, so. I think we should be able to send out a doodle poll. I think you would just have to get those dates to Whitney oh, to be able to okay. facilitate that. I would say let's avoid the 15th and the 22nd as okay. those two dates specifically as the 15th is a holiday and, and I don't want to require yep. anybody to participate on their day off necessarily. Um, yep. And the 22nd is likely where we're going to schedule our next meeting. So um, I would like to see if it's possible when if, if any of the other presenters are willing to look at another date, it would be nice if we could have at least one Monday on there as an option as the committee members generally we know that everybody has mondays at 5 15 mm -hmm. somewhat free okay. so if there's a I, we could get on there that would be great okay i will go back to them with that and see if that um would be doable um because yeah yep i can go back to them and see if, so if i were able to get them to um be available on the 8th is that a date that we could all work with then because i agree with you krista i just wanted to let you know what was 
answered back to me. And then, um, but if I, if I can get them to be available on the AF, I will do that if the committee members would be available that day. I think if you just want to ask them if, if they can make the 8th work, then you could propose the 8th. And then you mentioned Tuesdays and Thursdays typically work well. So I would propose yep. the 8th, the 16th, 18th, 23rd, and 25th to the committee. Um, and if Whitney could send that out as a doodle poll, then we'll pick whichever date has the best availability. And I think Perfect. that... Uh, I mean, we'll wait, obviously wait until you confirm that up with your speakers, but I think that would give us a good variety. We'd have one that's at a regularly scheduled meeting time, different day, but but normal time. And then we'd have a little yep. variety with those other four days. So perfect. That's what I was thinking. And I and we were planning on doing it at the same time as every other meeting would be the 515 start time and then going from there. And then limit it would be 60 to um, roughly 90 minutes, the, including the Q&A in that. Sounds great. Any questions okay. from Andy on this training? Brandy, did you have anything additional that you'd like to add, or, or is there anything that the committee can do to help you in preparing this training? I don't think as of now, this gives me a, a good point to go back to the speakers with. And then um, if there's any follow up, what I'll do is just send it to Whitney to have it sent out. But um, at this time, not really. If we all just, um, the speakers and I all have a good idea of what we want to present. And so that there wasn't too much uh, needed from the committee at this time. All right. Sounds great. Okay. I'll pause in case there's any questions for Brandy, and if not, we'll move on to the next item. Krista, this is Jason. Uh, could either you or Brandy, could you rattle off those dates again for the doodle poll, please, just to make sure we've got them all? Yeah, so it was the, she's going to check on February 8th, so that's a possibility if the speakers are available. Uh, otherwise, we'd be looking at February 16th. February 18th, February 23rd, and February 25th. Um, but you, you probably won't be able to send it out till you hear back from Brandy because she'll be checking to see if the 8th is a option available to us. Okay. Yep, and I'll send that email out tonight to them just so I can try to get a quick response. Thank you. Yep. All right, thank you, Brandy. Uh, so then we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, item eight, Bismarck Global Neighbors Diversity and Inclusion Partnership. Um, we had a, a number of action items that came out of the last committee meeting as far as what we'd like to do as after we heard from Leah about the needs that she saw in our community. Uh, one of those was the language access education, and we had talked a little bit about would we as a committee organize some sort of um, education program that the public could participate in? Uh, I don't know if we really went any further with that. I believe Leo is going to look in to see if there were any speakers who would be available to teach one of those classes, but I don't see that Leah's on the call. Um, Leah, if you're there, let me know. Maybe I'm just, there's no faces, so. So hearing that Leah is not on the call, I'm not sure that there's much more we can do in line with the language access education, unless any um, committee members have uh, come across anything that they'd like us to be aware of or have any ideas on a, a person who could teach some language access education. Specifically, this item was referring to teaching, you know, what is available for businesses to use, why language access is important. Um, so it would be more of a, a city, a presentation put on by the Human Relations Committee for businesses in the city of Bismarck. So any ideas on how we could facilitate that or any speakers we should be in contact with? I'm not familiar with anyone at this time, but if I come across anything, I would be more than happy to share that. 
that would be great. Thank you, Brandon. Well, yeah, I mean, it, no promises, but I feel like that one's a that's tough. <laughs> but I can I can put out some feelers and see what I can get back, if anything, honestly. Definitely, I appreciate that. I think Leah had a few people in mind, and she must not have been able to join us today. So um, I can okay. follow up with her and see if she had any uh, specific people in mind and, and how we could go about pursuing that. Any other questions or comments on that one? All right, so moving into the next bullet item under um, the Diversity and Inclusion Partnership, the Gateways for Growth. Uh, and this is a grant program that's um, specific to research and support for new American economy and welcoming America. Um, so improve, it aims to improve immigrant inclusion in their communities. And I see that those are linked. So, you know, feel free if you have the agenda up and you want to click through and, and learn a little bit more about that program, you're able to. Um, Whitney, I believe you were going to look into this a little bit and find out if this is something we could participate in. Yeah, there's nothing keeping the committee from participating or applying for the grants. Um, the only thing is, is one of the members or all of the members would have to dedicate at least an hour a day every week from start to finish. So it's kind of a heavy lift if that's something you guys were interested in doing. Did you say all of the members of the committee or just one? Um, if I was looking at like the best practices toolkit and it says at least one person would need to spend an hour a day per week at a minimum to facilitate the program. That does sound like quite a heavy lift. I don't know if there's anyone on the committee who would be willing to accept that responsibility. I think we need to be really realistic if we were to pursue this. So um, just opening it up to discussion, is there anybody who would feel comfortable uh, taking on that commitment? <laughs> Since I'm not hearing any feedback, I'm thinking that this is an item that maybe we can keep in the back of our heads, keep in the back of our minds, and maybe not pursue at this time. Uh, do any other committee members have input on that? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I would agree with putting it on the on the back. I just think that you're right with kind of the, the commitment piece and um, that's I, I know personally I wouldn't be able to take that on right now, but I'm only speaking for myself, so I, I'll give you a response. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. Any other input there? I'd, I'd love for it to be a discussion. I don't just want to say, hey, this is what we're doing. So if, if anybody else would like to, to chime in and share their thoughts, I'd really appreciate it. Hi, this is Manisha, and I'll just say um, it does look like a big commitment, and I don't know if personally if I have the time to commit an hour a day and week. That that's that is a heavy lift. So, just my two cents. Thank you, Manisha. Kind of in the same kind of in the same boat right now. It's a fifty. Have to ask. Is there anybody who would like to see us move forward with this grant or would have the time to dedicate to it? All right, hearing none and acknowledging that this is a heavy lift for a, a volunteer on committee, uh, I guess that we could keep this in mind as our projects related to diversity and inclusion move forward. But at this time, I think we can um, just put that on the back burner. We're aware of the, the grant program. And if we decide to pursue it, um, you know, we can always look at it at a later date. Um, 
underneath that, they do have a strategic planning best practices toolkit. I think there's some resources under this grant program that are available that we can probably use as we move forward in this partnership. Uh, but as far as the grant, I, I agree with everybody else on the call. I think it's probably not worth pursuing at this time. Uh, the next thing that we had was on the bullets underneath the diversity and inclusion partnership was the Portland, Oregon Immigrant and Refugee Program. Uh, and this is an example of what they've done in Portland, Oregon to welcome their new Americans. And it's meant to be used as inspiration for us as we look at ways to, um, you know, better our impact on our new Americans and not just new Americans, but, you know, anybody that we're trying to make sure feels more welcomed and included in our community. Um, so. I'm not sure if anyone's had a chance to look this over too thoroughly, um, but maybe prior to the next meeting, if we all want to give it a look and see if there's anything we feel we can apply in our community. That would be great if we could have time to read through it, because I feel like I, I didn't see this um, soon enough, but I what I did kind of skim over seemed to be really great information and I I agree with you. I think discussion is needed on it is if that's okay with the committee. Did anybody have a chance to look this over? All right, so maybe we'll just you know, put that down, you know, we'll keep that on the agenda so that we can look at that uh, next week and or not next week, next month, and hopefully we'll be able to discuss it more in depth then and, and talk about what we're able to do to, you know, take some best practices from that program and, and apply them locally. And the last thing is the Human Relations Committee Discrimination Forum. And Whitney, I think that you've been working on this and you've made some progress. I know that there's, you know, you've sent a few emails and I believe there's, you know, a lot of changes that came to our website and to the forum since our last meeting. Do you want to go over those? Um, yes, so we can click on that link. The first thing, the first big change on our website is, um, I think the window is covering, Jason. The bottom one. So, and if you, I'm not sure if you can, if, where that human relations window is at. This one? Yeah. So at the bottom of the screen where it says select language, um, you can change the website now into any of these languages and the people filling out the form can then understand what they are writing or what they're reading. Um, that goes for the whole website itself. So I know one of the um, issues with the form was that it was only in English and that we didn't have access to other languages. Um, so this kind of re or fixed that problem. Um, another option was to have some printed forms at the library. And if you guys were wanting that to be done, we can do that. We just don't have the option in different languages. I mean, unless I go through each of those languages or languages that are prevalent in our city, we can do that and have those printed for the library. Um, but yeah, that's about all that I have on that one. And Whitney, th this isn't just for our form, right? This translation option is across the whole website, right? Right. So if you switch that, Jason, then you get home. The Chinese are like super easy to. So this changes every. The only thing is like PDFs sometimes aren't translated. Um, but we looked at like even on um, the stuff from like the state and things like that. It 
most of the information is translated. That's amazing. So one step moving forward, we I called Civic Plus and I said, is this an I saw it on someone else's website and I'm like, is this an option we can purchase for our website? He's like, oh, I can put that on there right now. So I thought it was really cool. It made my day. Such a simple change and all we had to do is ask the question. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Thank you, Whitney, so much for your work on that. We really appreciate it. And I think it's it's pretty cool that we're, you know, we're talking about how everybody can improve language access. And it's nice to see that we're taking the initiative to do that, considering that, you know, if this committee were to be the one asking other businesses to take that step forward, it's nice that we're already there. So I appreciate all the work you did on that. Before we move on from the diversity and inclusion partnership, I did want to touch on one thing. I think that this has been a, a pretty slow moving agenda item. Um, you know, we've, we've had it on there for several months and we're not making a lot of progress. So I'm wondering if it would be better if we had somebody who was the lead maybe on this project who, you know, reported back. Uh, you know, we, we can say read these documents, but if we're not reading them and we're not coming prepared for discussion, I think we're just going to keep coming over it and, and, and kind of wasting time going in circles, going through all the bullet points. You know, we've spent about 10 or 15 minutes on it now, but we haven't been able to take any action. So I'm wondering if there are any committee members who are interested in being the lead on this. And um, I know it's an ask, um, but as a volunteer committee, we, we can't have all these responsibilities fall in the same uh, people. So I'm hoping that one of our committee members would be interested in taking this on. Uh, if not, I, I think it'll probably fall on me, but um, it, I would really like to see some, some committee members take this on as a initiative and maybe lead the progress going forward. Krista, what part are you asking to be taken on? With I, the reading and the lead? Sorry, I just want clarity on what you're asking. Well, I think it would be having a con having those conversations with Leah, connecting with her, making sure that she's aware of the meetings, she's able to attend, maybe things that I think it would kind of be all encompassing. So the gateways mm -hmm. for growth are striking that, right? Because as as of this time, we don't have anybody who's willing to make that commitment. But as far as that um, immigrant and refugee program and the language access education, to move that forward, I think we need more than just committee time, perhaps. I think it's going to be mm -hmm. conversations with Leah, maybe reading through those that program information and reporting back to the committee so the committee can take action. I'm not sure that we're really going to progress past it unless, you know, we have somebody who's passionate about it and willing to push it forward. Um, so I think if there's anybody who's willing to take on that initiative, that would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, this is Coley, uh, if, if they're gonna be a team, maybe if another person in, on the committee interested in order to be a part, I will be able to help out. But maybe for one person doing it, I don't know how, what I was included but I'm kind of interested. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, I think, you know, if we wanted to have a team that was working on this, that would be great. I also think just having one person who's doing the research and bringing it back to the committee, I think the committee could then be uh, the team on that. So we already have a lot of the materials here. Uh, we have our contact with Leah who could provide us with more you know, when we were talking about language access, she was going to provide us with a couple um, potential speakers or presenters who could talk to that, who could, you know, hold a, you know, one hour lunch and learn for businesses, for example. Um, so it, a lot of it is just connecting with Leah, uh, finding out to determine those resources. And then this image or this immigrant and refugee program from Portland, Oregon, I think if somebody combed through that and came back with points for the committee so that we knew 
um, you know, hey, this is what this program is about. Here are a couple things I liked. These are the things I can implement. I think our committee could implement and then we could have a discussion. So I think we really just need a point person to be the lead on it uh, to guide us through those conversations. Is that something you would be comfortable doing, colleague? Yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, I just thought it was the whole kinds of report that needed to be put in place. But yeah, I can work with Lee, Leah about that and we can get some information to get to the committee. That would be wonderful. Thank you. And like I said, the committee yeah. can kind of help you if you bring that information to the next meeting, the committee can help with those discussions mm -hmm. and will uh, will mm -hmm. help in any way possible to move it forward. OK, yeah. Thank Sounds you. Good. Any other questions on the or comments on the diversity and inclusion partnership? Kirsty, if you if you just give me uh, an, if you just send me an email, you know, and just as a reminder, some bullet points on what I'll be getting from Leah about the information, then I can I can take over. With, I can proceed with that. Sure. No, I can send you an email. And, and like I said, really, it's just asking her if she knows of any presenters who could teach a language access education uh, program to local businesses. Um, so how how local businesses could, um, you know, integrate a language access program. Uh, that's, that's what we're looking for people to present on. And then again, just to look over that Portland, Oregon Immigrant and Refugee Program and then report back to the committee what you think would be uh, some items that we could try to implement on a local level. And then, you know, once we have, once we hear from you on that, then, you know, we can hopefully have a exciting discussion about how we want to move this forward. All right. All right. Sounds good, Christy. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any other questions or comments on the diversity and inclusion partnership? I hey. had questions on the form. Is yep. that part of? Well, okay. So I was reviewing through the form that is out on our on our website, which I think looks really really good overall. Um, my question, my follow-up question is, I noticed that in there it had gender but not gender identity, and is that something, who would we need to talk to to maybe make that that change or, or adjustment? Because I think it's really important to make sure that gender identity is separate from sexual orientation since they are identified differently in communities. And then also with hate crime, since we don't have a city ordinance and the state of North Dakota does not have a bias or hate crime bill, how would we then move forward with that sort of information and who would we be reporting that to? Like the police, the labor and um, human services? Because when I'm looking at some of these, I'm, I'm just curious on what sort of partnerships or collaboration we're doing because for example, with employment and housing, those are going to go through the labor and human services department, but almost everything else is going to go through the court system. And so if we don't know who we need to be like directing, I guess I'm just kind of wondering where, where we're going to be, where this information gets sent off to, or if there's a process after that, like through beyond our committee so that we're not just holding this information that it's actually going out to where it needs to be going. Sorry, that was a really long statement to a really short question. No, I'm glad you brought that up because that was something we talked Sorry. about in the last meeting. And we okay. we wanted to identify because I don't know that the, the process has ever been established or in place. And then we talked, you know, at length about this at the last meeting. Yep. Where do these complaints go? Uh, how are they handled? Because as an advisory committee, we really don't have the power to enforce these. And so, yeah, so I, oh, we sorry, were going to talk about that today, and I just missed it. So I'm oh. really glad that you brought it up. Uh, Whitney, no, do, you, <laughs> do you or Jason have any insight on what the process has been, 
or if we have received any uh, discrimination forms and how they've been processed? Um, to this date, we don't have records of the forms being received. And so, um, or at least since Jason and I have been in this office, so going forward, we would need to establish a new um, process. Most of the time, if we get a form like this or we get a complaint or a concern, um, we direct it to the department that it's related to, or we try to get that person in contact with the right resources. So if it comes okay. to the committee, then the committee could further on or, you know, come up with a process to get the information in the right hands. Can I offer up um, something? So uh, the work I'm doing um, with the North Dakota Human Rights Coalition is a lot of this. And um, so I have been building relationships with people who are working on similar things or their different avenues. And would it be okay to share that we have this form? Because I know um, with like Erica Thunder through the governor's office, she would be able to better assist us and how we would we could potentially support anyone who would file a, a report, like I said, I, with employment and housing and um, getting them connected with the right people. And then I just fit, completed six separate trainings with the Bismarck PD on cultural competency this month. And so that's something we're establishing right now as kind of the follow-up to that training. And so if they're aware of this form, I would love to be able to take it back to them and see if they could advise us on like a better way to make sure that if people are submitting this form through our committee, that we have either an officer or a route to make sure that we can get it in, in front of them, when, especially if it's like a hate crime with, you know, race or, you know, gender or anything with hate crime, they have protocols and procedures and in and re, and certain forms and requirements in their forms that need to be filled out. And I think it would just be really beneficial to have a little bit of that seamlessness between what's being reported for biases, I guess. I, I would agree with that, Brandy. I think the other important thing is if we're going to have a discrimination form out there, I don't think anywhere on this form does it say that the discrimination has to occur among city staff. So if I were to see this, I would think that I could make any a report regardless of if it was involved on city property. Um, I've had people contact me because of my relationship with this committee to inquire about discrimination and housing and, and other forms of discrimination not related to city operations or city staff. And I wouldn't feel comfortable having them submit this form because I don't know that there's really a process in place for how we would handle that. And I wouldn't want okay. them to have false hope. I wouldn't want us to drop the ball. So I agree with what you're saying, um, Brandy. I think we need to define the process if this isn't going to go anywhere if there's no way that we're going to assist with these problems then i don't know that we should be encouraging people to submit a form so i think we need a process in place for how we handle these um and you know what can we bring resolution to any of this uh if we're just you know passing it off to a, a city department and we don't know that there's any um end in sight you know if there's no guarantee for improvement are are we really the best gatekeepers for that this and jason maybe you can provide some input on your thoughts regarding that sure i you know i think whitney was right <clears throat> that we would do our best internally to you know, address whatever concerns were out there and i guess my my first thought would be you know short of this office and our city attorney's office getting involved, depending on the nature of the complaint. My first thought was to send that to the police department. Uh, again, if it's if it kind of falls in that category of, of law enforcement doing the work, but at the same time, I can appreciate 
if all we're doing is is passing a complaint from one office to another, that's just going to lead to a little frustration on, on the individual's part. But that said, I would hate for that explanation from us. I would hate for that to stifle anybody uh, from you know using this form and and feeling confident about submitting the form. Um, having not received anything thus far doesn't surprise me because we're not really advertising that it's even out there. But right. I, if I'd be pretty foolish to assume that that we live in a community that is free from these types of concerns. So um, I would, I would say that. that having this form is really beneficial. And the reason being is, Jason, to your point, there are a number of things that are happening in the community where people are too afraid to go to the police directly right now. So this could be a really great opportunity to, for us to kind of be that, that safe space for community members to go because in 2019, there were no reports of any sort of biasy behavior re reported to law enforcement. But I can tell you that I personally experienced it, and experienced it this year and called the police as well as um, knowing other community members, but there just was too much fear around going to the police directly that um, has inhibited a number of people. And that's not just within the queer community. I'm speaking from um, people who had some other issues. And so I think that if we were to be able to say or establish that a protocol or, or, or even like suggest an ordinance change or, or anything where even if it's just saying, okay, if we take these forms, we have Officer Smith that we then submit these forms to or that they get sent over to, we can establish a safe space for individuals within our community, which wouldn't be, you know, like the worst thing with it still being the education piece of this can be filed on, but we, you know, after this point, um, this is this is kind of like out of our hands since we are really strictly with education. But I, I just I looked at our form and it really is so well laid out that I think that it could be very useful. And if it's put out there in the right communities, it may be utilized because people will feel safe going through the city versus going directly to an officer. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I think it makes sense, but if uh, as a, the devil's advocate here, if those people who file that discrimination form, who maybe were, were wary of going to the police, if they file that form and then the person who responds is a police officer rather than someone from the city, did we really resolve that concern, do you think? Or is it just one more step to get somewhere they didn't want to go? Because it would still be the police that are, are handling the situation. We're just kind of the middleman. And really all we do is they submit it and then we say, you know, Officer Smith, here you go. This is Manisha. Can I just add something to the yeah. discussion here? I'm and and really I'm just basing it off of, you know, if there is someone who's looking for a safe space. I think they're going to be much more hesitant going right away to law enforcement in uh, compared to taking those smaller steps where, yeah, they are finally able to, obviously they are going to be helped by the law enforcement. However, if there is someone in the middle, it does help them be able to come out and speak or ask for help really, because I think that's what they're really looking for. And sometimes people are, you know, we, we do know that people are worried and scared of the uniform. And so if one of our goals as a committee is to provide that safe space, then I think this, the information coming in from the form might help the person whoever is submitting it. Thank you, Manisha, and thank you, Brandy. So if we're going to move forward with this, do we want to just have these forms go to the police department or do we want to identify, we want to work with the police department to identify a process, maybe who's the officer in charge of these complaints? Um, 
you know, if we're talking about setting up a process, um, I think we'd have to make some changes moving forward. Uh, any thoughts from the committee on that? I like the idea of the, the second suggestion you had mentioned with who an officer, I think, I'm, I mean, realistically, we'd probably have to have a conversation with them anyways, I'm assuming. <laughs> like, hey guys, we're just gonna send you forms, but I think establish, seeing if they already have an already existing officer or if they would establish one um, or how that looks, um, I'd be more than happy to reach out to the officers I've been working with, I've been working with Chief Dravovich and Officer Horn and Officer Ziegler, who are the community officers, which falls underneath. Um, so with Officer Horn and Officer Ziegler, it literally falls underneath their roles and responsibility. So I would be curious to see if this is something they would already be prepared or or available to take on. Um, or have better guidance for it. So I'd be happy to reach out and ask if you if that's something you'd like me to do. That would be great, Brandy. Do you think we should have one of the officers attend our next meeting so we can discuss this? That is a great question. <laughs> Manisha? I, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Manisha, I see your hands raised. Did you have a comment? I just wanted to um, get a clarification. I have not seen the form, and so my question is: as as someone is submitting the form, is is there any place in there which states that hey, when you're submitting this form, we're going to try and connect you to someone who is an officer? Because I think letting people know up up front is also an important thing to do. No, Manisha, I don't think that's on there. And uh, the form is actually what they had up earlier when we were showing the the language translation. This is the comment in the complaint form that you can submit. So you would provide the, um, you know, information, your contact information, the allegation of discrimination was because of. Um, but like I said, I don't know that there was ever a formal process identified so I don't know that it says anywhere that you know we will follow up with you or, or a police officer will follow up with you so that's where I think that we would need to have some sort of process in place if we were to promote this as is I, I don't know you know things in city government uh, move kind of slowly sometimes our committee only meets once a month so if we got a complaint form last week let's say mm -hmm. we wouldn't see it until probably wouldn't be able to take any action on it till this meeting. And at this time, we don't even know what our process is. So it, it would just kind of hang in the balance. And if somebody filled out this form and they were discriminated against, I don't think we can just sit on it for, you know, a month or several weeks before they get a follow up. So that's where I think we need to identify a process. And to yours and, and Brandy's point, perhaps it's a relationship with the police department in you know, we're going to promote this form. If we get any complaints, we're going to send them to you. And then maybe either somebody from this committee or city staff would respond, you know, to somebody to say we forwarded this on to the Bismarck PD. Or maybe we just put it on the form that uh, this form will be committed to the business or would, would be submitted to the Bismarck PD. But to that extent, that's where I wonder, you know, we're playing that middleman role. You know, I it seems like we're we're just passing the buck. It seems like maybe this is something we should be urging the, the Bismarck police to take on so that there's not so many levels to get that complaint submitted. But if we think this would be uh, more successful in garnering those, those comments and complaints than one on the police's website, then I think if that's the, the intent of the committee, then I think we stick with the form and just develop a process. Thanks, Krista. I agree with you. I mean, yeah, you you have very valid points and absolutely. I mean, um, it's not for us to be taking, we're making a decision about how to go about resolving any kind of complaint. Um, I, I do think at this point, it'll really help us as we have someone from the PD come in and, you know, if they already have a process in place and if they say they have a great success rate and maybe 
we don't need the form. However, I do feel if we have a form, it could be just a safe haven for people if they want to. But absolutely getting a process would be really important here. Sure. Whitney and um, Jason, would you be able to request that an appropriate um, person from the Bismarck Police Department attend our next meeting to discuss what our options would be if we were looking to, um, you know, promote this form and, and work with the PD on those complaints? Yeah, definitely, Krista. This is Jason. We can we can either reach out to Chief Chief Dreyevich, uh, directly or um, Officer Horn reports to Sergeant Brocker. He's in charge of that division within the PD for the community relations and outreach side of things. So either way, we can talk to one of those two individuals and see if we can get somebody available for the <clears throat> excuse me, the January meeting. Uh, any other discussion on the human relations discrimination form? If not, we'll just move forward with <coughs> the information. Excuse me, the, the invitation to the um, Bismarck Police Department to see if they can attend our next meeting. And hopefully we're able to come up with some um, sort of process at that time and determine if this form is something we want to keep in place on the website. Uh, moving on to our 2020 Human Relations Committee goals. Um, Top of the list is full committee. As you know, we're going to be losing a few members of our committee as their terms expire um, in 2021, in January of 2021. Um, I believe we've received a few applications. Whitney, can you give us an update on that process? Have they been forwarded to the mayor? And you know, are we looking at having someone appointed at our next meeting? Um, we have three people being appointed at the next meeting. Um, two of them are current committee members. And then we have one new member. I'm trying to find the. Yeah. Just give us a second. We're going to pull up the agenda for tomorrow. Um, Darcy, Manisha, and then a new member. I think it's Sargiana Wutsky. Is she applied and the mayor um, picked hers out of the seven other applicants that we had? Seven applicants. That's impressive. It is. I he, he was pretty excited to have to go through that many applications and he had them for a couple of weeks and really reviewed, um, took his time to review them before picking and he um, made his selection. And so the letters went out that the commission would be reviewing um, for approval or for appointment. And then um, we should have new people. I, I believe I put um, for them or for at least um, Sargiana to attend the January meeting on her letter that will go out just so she could get to know everybody. Kind of have a warm up meeting before um, she's officially appointed. Wonderful. Thank you for all your work on that, Whitney. Um, one of the terms that's expiring in January, uh, a current committee member who will no longer be serving is Sister Hannah. And uh, I think I speak for all of us, but I, I personally want to thank Sister Hannah for all of her work on this committee. She's been a driving force. She has taken on so many projects, led so many initiatives, and everything she does is heartfelt and meaningful. And, and you exercise such great care and all the work you do. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work you've brought to this committee. Um, you leave behind big shoes to fill, and I'm personally sad to see you go, but um, appreciate all that you've done for this committee. So thank you. Thank you, Krista, for that. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to meeting the new members and and of course two of our members are already here so uh thank you darcy and manisha for your interest in staying on 
the committee. And I look forward to what we can do in 2021. Uh, but I guess we'll, we'll likely, I don't think that there's going to be any debate. So it's very likely that uh, Sargiano will be our new member and, and hopefully we can all be very welcoming to her at the next meeting and, and make her glad to, to be joining us. Uh, student liaisons is the next thing up. We've tabled that discussion till May. In case any of you were not at the last meeting, uh, we decided to table um, any discussion and progress on that until May because we just weren't getting any applications in. So in May, we'll revisit the process, see what we can do to raise awareness and move forward with that. Uh, Diversity University, this fall, uh, as you know, because of COVID-19, uh, we were not able to host our cultural dinner. And in place of that, instead, Sister Hannah and Manisha uh, took on a little project. I believe Whitney sent out a video to the committee members today. Uh, phenomenal job on that video. Manisha, you were an excellent host. Uh, Christine with the city did the video editing and Ben over at Dakota Media Access did the filming. And of course, Sister Hannah was a driving force behind uh, accomplishing this video. But uh, wonderful job. I watched the whole thing today and I'm very excited to try baking my own butter chicken with your recipe, Manisha. But uh, Hannah and Manisha, if you want to tell us a little bit about that for those who maybe haven't seen the video. Uh, yeah, I can start and then I have a uh, question, I guess, for the committee. Um, I think it went really well. Um, I can let Manisha talk about how it was to host. I mean, it took quite a few hours on that Saturday. Uh, ben came with, I think, all the cameras from Dakota Access. A lot of cameras. Um, so we had like major setup going, uh, which is why it looks so nice with all the different angles. And then Christine kind of did the directing, I guess. Um, and then we just, I just kind of helped where they needed and Manisha did the cooking. And like I said, it, of all the hours that were there and then the editing she had to do, very impressive. So um, I'll let Manisha talk in a minute, but I got an email from Christine today from the city who did the editing. And I would like to continue with these. Um, I have some uh, people who are sort of on, I'm getting them ready to um, agree. <laughs> uh, names I got from Leah from Global Neighbors that are willing to be the next contestants on this little cooking show. Um, it's it's a lot of editing and it's too many hours for Christine to do at, at her job. Um, to be a 15 minute type video like Manisha's was. So she, Christine asked, she was wondering if we would switch to more of a three to five minute video um, with more with a little bit more of a script. Um, I think it would have kind of a similar beginning, um, but the cooking part would be faster, I guess, um, because she feels she could edit those. Uh, I think my hands are kind of tied here because I can't do the editing. I mean, I, I don't really, I don't know how, and of course time and stuff. Um, and we'd almost have to hire somebody, I think, if we wanted to do more 15 minute videos. Um, on the one hand, I think people might watch more of the, if it's a little shorter. Um, but yeah, that's why I brought it here to see what people think. Um, and Manisha, if you want to talk now. Sure, thank you, Sister Hannah. First of all, thank you all for, if you watched that video, thanks a lot, because I know it, it was a long video. It was 15 minutes and absolutely, I agree with Sister Hannah. I think I was just cooking, but the other people were standing and watching and bearing with me and it, it, it was about a three hour thing. So I agree that, you know, all three people Sister Hannah, Ben, and Christine, they had to put in a lot of work, and I can not even imagine how much work would Christine have had to put in to clip that three hour thing to a 15 minute. So um, it was definitely fun for me um, to go and cook, but I know that um, it must have been very difficult to edit and to, and Ben was there an, an evening prior to that just to set up things early in the morning as well so it did take much more than what what we tend to see which 
because of which I am much more appreciative of the cooking shows now that I watch. So um, yeah, I, I agree with Sister Hannah. I mean, if we could cut it down to a five or a seven minute, I think that will save a lot of people a lot of time as well as energy. So, yep. And if you're trying that dish and you have questions about anything, please feel free to email me or reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you. We taste tested. It was very, very good. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah and Manisha. As somebody who's done video production um, professionally and, and done communications professionally, I think that you're on to something with the shorter videos. I think one way that could easily, you know, we could easily handle that is if you've ever seen any of the tasty recipes or, you know, the, it, it's basically a shot over, you know, a bowl or oven oven. It's a close up where all the ingredients are pre-measured and you're just kind of dumping them in a bowl and, and there's that catchy music behind it. And so you just dump it in a bowl and it's on the screen. It says, you know, two tablespoons um, cayenne yeah. pepper or something. It's sped up. That's right. Yep. Yep. It's really sped up and it's just, you know, we would probably have uh, the person who was teaching the recipe would probably speak for, you know, 15, 20 seconds at the start, talk about their um, culture and, and what they're cooking. And then you just go into the music showing, you know, the food being dropped into the bowl, it going in the oven and then a final shot of it, um, you know, how it looks. So I think that would probably be more manageable for Christine as, as saying that as somebody who's edited video before that would probably be a lot easier because there's a lot less cutaways and things you have to worry about because it's basically just you know throwing things in a bowl yeah and we need Ben too because I didn't really get trained on the you know there was just too much going on and he, he had so many cameras and I mean I think it would take a lot of training for me to get to know what he was doing so so it's kind of a time thing. We need Ben, Christine, and our volunteers all on the same day. And um, so, yeah, I'm glad you're supporting the shorter video because then we can keep Christine. Certainly. And also, yeah. I think for your own time as volunteers, that's a lot of time to ask you guys to donate as committee members. So, you know, if we can shorten that up, I think that would be great. Yeah. We're hoping and to do two in one day next time, I think. So, okay. Are you, when are you planning to do the next videos, Hannah? Are you? Um, well, I'm hoping January. I'm, I'm finding out first when other, when Christine's available and stuff, and then I'll move to my people that I'm working on to give them a few options. But I think Saturdays, you know, is really the only time, I think, because of people's work, you know. Sure. Well, I'm not going anywhere in the near future. So if you want me there to help out in any capacity, let me know. Oh, okay, sure. If you're there, just let me know when you guys are doing it next. Mm -hmm. uh, did anybody else have anything to add about the videos? Did you watch them? Do you have any feedback? I'm not sure when they're going live. Do you, does anybody know? I mean, I know they're on YouTube, but on the Facebook page and stuff. That we were going to kind of see if you guys had a direction or if you had, if you wanted them live right away or um, she finished them over the weekend. She wanted to leave that up to you guys. It's ready to go. Right. All we can do is kind of push it out there. One thing I would say regarding this video in particular, Manisha, you made comments about the holidays, right? How this was a, a meal that you traditionally enjoyed over the holidays. Uh-huh. So I, with that in mind, I think it would be nice to get this around, get this out sometime this week, probably, unless Manisha or Hannah has any other preferences on that. That's fine. Yeah, I think that was the intent that we get them out during the holidays. So and I'm completely fine. Where's the recipe? Will that be on the... That'll be underneath or what? I didn't quite get what Christine said to me today. Um, she was actually going to see if Manisha would email the recipe. Okay. Um, she was going to try to watch it and pick out everything that she said, but she thought that if Manisha had it. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes, I, think we need I, that do, on. I do have her email. Okay. Go ahead, Sister Hannah. 
I was just saying, we, we need that on there before we put it out, obviously. I'll work on it sometime. I'll send it to her sometime tomorrow. Krista, this is Jason. Uh, maybe just for the group to understand what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, Christine shared with us this morning the amount of time that it took her to basically condense this into 15 minutes. And just Christine's time alone was somewhere between 16 and 20 hours. And her estimate of a production value, if you were to go out and pay for this type of a service from a local production company, you'd be in the neighborhood of at least $3,000 worth of time. So there's there's a significant commitment on, on our part. And unfortunately for Christine, this is not her primary role. Uh, we can't just let her go out and do this kind of stuff. This is this is really meant to be kind of secondary or even third on her task list. Although we're we're delighted she's here, we really want to use her her creative skills and and the the, the support that she brings to this office. But we've got to make sure that we balance her time doing office work in addition to all this other stuff. And if if these types of things get to be this length in the future, I don't know that we can offer Christine services. So we're going to have to figure out a way to make this much more efficient and much more user friendly. The other thing we're not really accounting for here is is the time from Ben Smith and Dakota Media Access. I know he was over at the food co-op day in advance and, and as Sister Hannah mentioned, you know, bringing in a lot of equipment and things like that. So even his his expertise is kind of being uh, it, it's not really noted in a total roll up cost and we're not we're not putting a dollar amount to this per se. But I just wanted to have everybody understand that, you know, if we really wanted to put all the numbers and the value to this, we'd probably be looking at somewhere around $5,000 for a 15 minute video. Jason, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, when you put those those dollar signs there, it really shows how much of a service they both did for us and as well as Manisha and Sister Hannah for being the the talent and the drivers behind this. So I, I don't know if everybody here knows Ben or, or if you've had the opportunity to meet Christine, but if you do, um, I think it would be nice if we could give them a thank you for the work that they've done on this. Um, I'll, I'll email both of them and let them know that I appreciate it. But if, if anyone else has the opportunity to do that, uh, Ben Smith, you can probably find and contact from Dakota Media Access's website. Uh, and then as far as Christine, I'm sure that um, Jason or Whitney would be able to provide the email address for them. Uh, Jason, you mentioned not being able to support it. Is that heavy in the future? Do you know if we were able to condense these down to, let's say, three to five minute max videos, which would cut the edit time down to at least a third, if not more. Is that something that the city could support or do we need to look at other options? I'd like to continue to try and support it as best we can. And Christine is more than willing to to do some of this, but at the same time, what I can't let her do is I can't let her do it for free. You know, she worked on it over the weekend and things like that, but regardless of if she's, if she's in the office or not, um, she needs to get paid for that time. So she and I will work out, you know, how we, how we manage that here. Um, but I think a three to five minute video based on what Christine is telling us would be a much more manageable project for her. Now I, I can't speak for Ben, um, but I can speak as a consumer. You know, three to five minutes is a, that's a pretty long attention span in today's YouTube audience world. So uh, I'm anxious to see how, how well this is received, um, you know, through YouTube analytics here we'll be able to see how many people watch the video in, in its entirety, how many kind of click through it, how many dropped off halfway, and that might help us better understand what the audience's attention span is and, and hit a better target that way too. No, I think you're right. From a communications perspective, one and a half minutes is kind of the sweet spot. You don't want to go over that. So I'd say ideally the frame would be two or three minutes, but I, I was thinking five, it might, you know, as we're we're trying to cut back, it might take us a, a little bit more to get down to that that sweet spot, so to so to speak. So, um, you know, Manisha and, and Sister Hannah, does that seem doable to cut it back to five minutes or less for the next couple videos? Yeah, 
Yeah, and that was, you know, besides the money part, I feel okay with it because it was Christine's idea. I mean, she definitely could have been like, I probably won't do anymore because I left it a little bit open-ended on the email. I said, I know how much work this is. And she said, well, I think I could do it three to five minute videos. So, um, I, you know, I'll believe her because I don't know much about editing except that it takes forever. So, yeah, I think it'd be fine. All right. Any other comments on the um, cooking club videos? Uh, hearing none, we'll move to the next one. Speaking to service clubs and committees, Sister Hannah, uh, have you had an opportunity to speak to any other service clubs or committees since our last meeting? No, nope, it's kind of on hold. I, I did four last before COVID, so. Okay. I kind of figured it would be on hold. I don't think people are <laughs> fighting speakers as much. Uh, they're just not even meeting, yeah. <laughs> Some right. of them, especially the older ones, yeah. Uh, and then participation in community events. Um, there's, as far as I'm aware, there's not a lot of events we can participate in right now due to COVID, uh, but I could be wrong. Are there any events that a committee member would like to bring forward to this committee that we should consider participating in? Here you share. Oh, I guess oh. I just share the video when it comes out. Participate in that, I guess. The cooking video. Thank you, Hannah. I definitely will. And I'm going to make it and I'm going to tell you how it turns out. It'll awesome. Probably turn out as well as Manisha's, but I'm going to give it a go. Uh, maybe I'll create a video of my own showing how bad an amateur chef can do at Indian food. What was that, Jason? I was just going to mention that when the video is ready, when we have the recipe and all that stuff and, and put that into the comment section or wherever it ends up in the, the, the information, it's most likely that this office will push it out on the city's Facebook page. And once we've done that, for those of you that have uh, that social media platform, we can make sure that Whitney sends you guys a link. And if you guys want to share it with your network, that would probably be the best way to get it out there. Thank you, Jason. All right, it looks like we got through our goals. The one thing, there's one thing under other business that I, I would like to bring up um, just prior to the start of our, our next year as a committee. Um, and I'll, I'll be brief, I promise. I'm sure we all want to uh, move on with our evenings. But uh, this year we had several committee members that missed um, three meetings. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that. Uh, there are probably a lot of absences, you know, due to COVID with, or, or other things that had come up. But uh, just a friendly reminder that as a member of this committee, uh, it's important that committee members attend meetings so that we are able to move forward with projects and, and have full discussion. Um, so in the year ahead, uh, the expectation has and will be that each committee member is responsible for attending eight out of the 12 committee meetings. Um, if that's something that you feel like you're not able to do, um, you don't have to, to say anything now, but you can shoot me an email and we can talk through it. Uh, but I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of the expectations so it doesn't come up um, down the road. And I think that, you know, if there was there are certain exceptions that can be made, you know, if there there was a, um, you know, really strong expectation, if there was something terrible happening, you know, if somebody was very ill or a family member was very ill, I think we'd be willing to work through those things. But we just have to have people at the meetings so that we can move forward with business. So um, that's all I had to say about the attendance. I think nobody got into trouble this year. We had really good attendance today, but there are a few people who, if they hadn't attended today, might have, you know, met that uh, just barely inked by on the uh, attendance requirement for the year. So I just wanted to reiterate that. Um, other than that, I don't have anything to add during this meeting. So I'll open it up to the rest of the committee. Are there any other business that we need to discuss? I do have one comment that I'm going to make here. Yes, Darcy, go ahead. I thought I would let you know that my brother Dave is in the um, People's Magazine. Oh, 
Oh, that's great. What's he in the magazine for? It, they're doing on the magazine. It's um, they're kind of doing. How do I want to say it? It's throughout the whole U.S. and whatnot. They're kind of doing highlights on people that have passed away from the COVID-19. And so because my brother Dave was running for, to be a legislator, it's been a nightmare with that because it went to the Supreme Court and whatnot. Um, so they, the People Magazine was really hounding my mom on doing an article. Um, so I actually picked one up today. It is, um, how do I want to say it? It's December, I got to look here, on the 28th. And it has um, Kate on the front of it. And Dave is on page 54. So they have a really nice picture of him and just a really small article. Um, so it's on pretty much everybody that has passed on from this ever since the COVID-19. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you, Darcy. And uh, I, I believe the reason that they were interested in that story is Darcy's brother, and correct me if I'm wrong, Darcy, but your brother was elected to uh, a political office here in the state of North Dakota, um, but unfortunately passed. For the District, for the district 8. Um, he, him and Dave Nering beat out Jeff Delzer. And because of the election, the governor appointed someone um, the day after the election and never said anything to anybody. So it was a nightmare. Um, right now, I will tell you that my dad is having a very difficult time dealing with a lot of guilt. And knowing that there's three kids, I can kind of relate to that with dealing with the um, survival guilt, being the only child left. So it's been a real roller coaster for me right now. And of course, our birthday was actually on the 30th of October, and it was a real gut wrencher. can't imagine how hard that would cool. be to go through, Darcy, and, and we're certainly here for you if you ever need somebody to talk to. Uh, I hope you know that. Well, I do, and I, I will I will say this one thing about Mayor Bakken, because he knew Dave also, and I told Steve that because Dave and I are twins, that's why I say the survival skills, um, because both of my brother, brothers are gone in the month of October. Um, and I told Steve, and I guess I was only going about how I was feeling at the time. And I said to Steve, I said, yeah, Dave is my twin brother. I said, I don't even know if I even want to celebrate my birthday this year. Steve actually told me, and he kind of woke me up with it, and said to me that if you don't celebrate your birthday, then you're not celebrating him. You know, and oh my God, is that so true? So I do, and I talk to Steve, not all the time, but he kind of checks in every so often. So I do, I thank God for that part. Um, so yeah, it's been very, very tough for the last few months. So if you talk about ab absence, being absent or whatever, it's been a very, I've been trying to make them, but I usually try to let people know that when I'm not going to be there. So I don't know if that counts as an excuse or what, but I'm trying my best. No, Darcy, that's understandable. I think, uh, and you've only missed two meetings this year. I'm looking at our attendance right now. So you're in I've missed two meetings this year. I missed February and I missed October. So um, we're you and I are, are kind of in a, a fair place. We're not in a position to be worried. It's 
more for, um, you know, if there's anybody who can't meet that eight meeting requirement. And of course, a lot like what you've um, suffered is something we would certainly take into account if you were to miss, you know, several meetings. Um, those are the type of you know, extenuating circumstances that uh, exceptions can be made. So. Well, one thing I'm going to tell you is that I lost both bro brothers in the month of October, and I'll tell you how close it was, and it didn't really hit me until after I found out about Dave. My youngest brother was killed in a car accident in 1980. He was 11. Um, Dave was 55, so I'm really beginning to hate double-digit numbers here. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's hasn't been fun and just because of the legislative sessions and having reading the articles in the paper oh my god has made me really angry so it pays to have friends as legislators because when they start calling my brother mickey mouse or why in the hell did we vote for a dead person oh my god i wish people would do their homework because dave passed away on october 5th and I'm just going to round it off to a month because the election was the 3rd of November. The state could not take my brother off the election ballots. So I just wish that people would do their homework. Thank you, Darcy. I'm sure it's been a very difficult time for you. And I think we're all very sorry to hear of your loss. Um, if any of the committee members see that People magazine and, and want to take a look at it to learn more about her brother's story, um, it sounds like it should be available now. Um, well, it is. But I actually went down to Target this morning, and I actually called my mom to make sure which um, the date was or whatever. Um, it does have Kate. Um, okay. Um one of the uh, over in U the UK. What am I trying to say? Um, uh, I wanted to say, is he married to Prince Harry or is it the other one? I can't remember now. I'm really losing it here. But anyway, it's she's on the front of it, and so it's December 28th. Okay, the December 28th issue. So if you guys are you know, out shopping and you see the magazine, you might want to pick it up. Uh, it sounds like it, it would be a an interesting read and, and certainly a, a story that's very dear to one of our committee members. So please consider it, giving it. I have like small articles of everybody else, so it's actually kind of cool. I haven't been reading a lot of, I've been reading some of them, but not all of them. But some of them are even like really small, like infants and whatnot. It's been kind of gut-wrenching. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Darcy. Unfortunately, in the sake of time, we're already at 644, so I think we're going to have to wrap up. So I'm going to do one last call for any other business uh, from the committee. Hearing none, I'd no, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn from Darcy. Do I have a second? No second. Okay, Brandy seconding. All in favor, uh, raise your hand or say aye. 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 All aye. 